Right, so we talk about water quality guidelines. So there are three things that you need to know. The first one is the national water quality standards for Malaysia, or we call it as NIWQS. Initially, it was called as Interim National Water Quality Standard for Malaysia, INWQS, okay? When you talk about interim, it means, you know, in Malay, sementara. Okay, it's been so, lo so long being in sementara states, okay, in interim state. But in 2019, it is uh, officially launched. Yes, that's the right word to use. So, and it's called National Water Quality Standards. So, and then another thing that you need to know is on the water quality index, okay? So, how do you calculate the water quality index? And then the last part, not the, the last part for the water quality is the drinking water standard. So, let us look at the first one, NWQS. Right, the NWQS, okay, basically it's classified the river into class, uh, class 1 up to class 5. This is like normal human being, okay? When you go, you enter your university, when you did your undergraduate degree, you were being classified, okay? As a first class student, second class upper, second class lower, third class student, and so on and so forth. It seems like, you know, since human like to classify human, so also human also likes to classify river. They have class one up to class five, okay? I, I'm assuming that most of you have already learned this, so... Which one is the best class? Will be class 5 or class 1? Class 1. Class 1, okay. So any any other attempt? Doctor. Yep. Uh, I, for me, I think, I think class 1 is not necessarily the best because I think class 1 is suitable for human for drinking, but other organisms may be not suitable, I think. Okay, let, let, let's look at the... The criteria okay before we say that is the best or not so let, let us add the criteria okay this is basically the criteria to classify the river okay they have aluminium arsenic barium cadmium and so on they have all these chemical things phenol aldrin dildrin okay so those are the parameters they have so many parameters okay including other things as well like uh, ammonic nitrogen biochemical oxygen uh, COD and so on. So if you look at class one, let's say for fecal coliform, okay, they're expecting you to have uh, at least, or not at least, at the most 10 count per 100 ml of fecal coliform. But most of the chemicals here or the parameters here, they should be on the natural level. So they don't define what natural level means or if you have absence, okay, absent none of these, that will be better. The never, basically, if the river uh, do not have aluminium masking and so on, so that is class one. So basically, class one is really good. If you have, let's say, class three river, okay, so anything in bracket here, this means there is a 24 hours um, average of concentration of aluminium. So for aluminium, in order for them to achieve class 3, it should not exceed 0 0.06 milligram per litre in 24 hours. Okay? So some the numbers in bracket uh, indicating the 24 hours average and the number outside the bracket is actually the maximum uh, should present in the water. So you have so many parameters and uh, the limits for each parameters uh, to satisfy whether they are class 1, class 2, class 2B, class 3, class 4, and class 5. Okay, let's say if you have, I'm giving an example, ammonica nitrogen to be 0 0.05 milligram per liters. BOD is 0 0.05 milligram per liters. Chemical oxygen demand or COD is 14. And dissolved oxygen is 8. Okay, it's greater than, uh, than 7. So what would be the class for that particular river? Class 1, Dr. Mike. Class, class 2B. Class 2B. Someone said class 2B and someone said class 1. Okay. Any other answers? I have two answers already. 2B. 2B. Okay, I have two Bs. Two students saying two Bs and one student saying class 1. Okay. 
So anyone else who like to attempt? 2B. Yeah, 2B. Okay, 2B or even 2A. For the, because of 2A and 2B have the same standard. So basically we can say that the river has, uh, the river is in class 2. So right, what does it define? What, what does it mean having a first class river or second class 2B or 2B, uh, 2B or 2A, third, fourth and fifth class? So if you are in class 1, conservation of natural environment, water supply, practically no treatment necessary. Okay, basically you can just drink the water directly from the river. Just like when I, I mentioned to you last week that I, I went to the Andau Rompe National Park. Okay, so the water was so fresh. It was so cold. You know, I get thirsty suddenly when explaining this kind of thing. Okay, and it's, it's, it tastes, you know, full of oxygen. You can see all the bubble of the oxygen inside the water. So it's so great. So basically, plus one really indicates that it's a, it's a great category for the river. Okay, but if you have... You know, even class two, you can use this for water treatment plant. Okay, you can take a river from uh, for that is classified as class two A or class two B. Okay, even class three. Okay, you can use for water supply, but you need extensive treatment treatment for it. But once the river once the river is in class four, they no longer suitable for water supply, but they can be used for irrigation. Okay, or in Malay, it can be used in pertanian. You can you know, use it, use it for your for your farm, okay? And those are the the usage of class four river, okay? But if you are having class five, so certainly they cannot use for the for the farm for agriculture. You can use for water supply. Cannot use for uh, recreational things, okay? Simply just we have to treat class five river until it improves to be class four, class three, and eventually to class one if it's possible. Right, so that is the first part, classifying river through NWQS, okay? So basically, you have to refer to this table. This is the latest table, actually. This is 2019, I got. 